Hi and welcome to Gamers Web. Uh, my name is Mark and today I'm going to carry on my look at the Marvel Crisis Protocol miniature game expansions. And today we're going to look at CP17, which is Rocket and Groot. Um, I've already reviewed uh, Star Lord. Um, the link for the Star Lord review will be down in the description or floating up here somewhere. Uh, because they came separately, I got Star Lord first, then Rocket and Groot arrived. So um, I would have done it the other way around, but hey. All right then, um, so let's have a quick look. So uh, CP17 contains these two lovely miniatures and as always uh, no one touches my plaster. Uh, the result of genetic experiments and cybernetic enhancements, the walking tree fighting creature known as Rocket is the force to be reckoned with and gifted a gifted pilot, deadly marksman and cunning explosive expert. Rocket leads with zeal, sorry fights with zeal uh, for unleashing carnage upon those who threaten his friends and fellow guardians of the galaxy. The strange plant-like being known as only as Groot loves life and fights to protect it. Endowed with exceptional strength and abilities to regenerate damage at a prestigious rate, Groot has formed a friendship with Rocket like no other as they fight to defend the cosmos. It includes one Rocket miniature, one Groot miniature, two bases, two character stat cards, two team tactic cards, ten tokens, miniatures as always supplied, Unassembled and unpainted. Okay, so a um, little bit of background about Rocket and Groot. Um, Groot has been around for a long time. Um, Groot first appeared in 1960. Uh, he's created by uh, Larry Lieber, uh, Stan Lee, and uh, the late Jack Kerber. He's um, first appeared in Tales to Astonish 13 um, back in November 1960. And um, when he first appeared, he wasn't the monosyllabic creature that we come to know and love um, in the movies. Um, he could actually speak. Uh, Rocket uh, was uh, quite a recent character. Uh, he's from the 1970s, from about 76, 77. Um, created by uh, Larry Lieber and... Uh, sorry, not Larry Lieber. Uh, Keith Geffen and somebody else who I can't remember, but I'll put it in, in my, my review anyway, um, as I always do. Um, and he was created as a law enforcement officer, believe it or not. Uh, so he actually um, is a, you know, a law enforcement officer uh, for uh, the world, a quadrant um, around the world of Half World, which is where he lives. Um, and Groot comes from Planet X. So they all have strange sounding names, but it's all cool. Okay, so nothing left in the box. Usual obligatory piece of card. Right, and um, I'm going to have a look at the miniatures first, get those out of the way, and then we'll look at the cards. Okay, so um, the sculpts on these are fantastic, they look phenomenal. But again, we've got a wee problem with small pieces, which if you see the Star Lord review, Star Lord is terrible for small pieces. Okay, now um, these are the bases for uh, Groot, and those are the bases for Rocket. Use this base, don't use that base. Because when you actually come to put him on, you will find that uh, that base won't f he won't fit on that base properly. This is the best base to use, or any of the flat bases. Okay. Um, all right. Um, we appear to we have a problem here for me because I don't have Rocket. I only have Groot. Oh no, I do have Rocket, there he is. I didn't think I had him, he's that small. Okay, right, sorry, I had a bit of a panic there. Okay, so this is Rocket. <laughs> Might as well start with him whilst he's in my hand. Um, there's his big gun, there's the front of his head, there's his head, his tail, and the root that he's standing on. I actually had a panic attack then because I thought that I didn't have Rocket, and Rocket's the reason I wanted the, the box. And here we have Groot. Um, Groot is probably going to be quite simple to put put together. Rocket has got some very, very small pieces because it's a very small miniature anyway. But um, details quite good on them. Um, loads and loads of branches and little leaves and stuff like that on uh, Groot. And then, uh, let me just have a quick look at Groot's head. Great. And then um, have a quick close-up on Rocket as well. Absolutely fantastic. Um... Just get back to normal. All right. Oh, I've gone too far out. <laughs> there we go. Right. Okay. So um, you do, of course, get the uh, obligatory instructions for uh, CP eighteen, uh, CP seventeen. Sorry. 
Um, where are they? Oh, that's, sorry, that's Star Wars instructions. Um, and there's nothing extra on these, there's no extra rules or anything. Uh, but um, So, rockets pulls on a route of Groot that's uh, coming out of the base, and then on the back there's um, all the assembly guys for Groot. Right, okay, let's get onto the actual cardboard uh, itself now. I'm just going to actually open this using a knife because um, I struggled last time because they were in so tight. Alright, okay, so we get our Guardians of the Galaxy affiliation tokens. Uh, we get some rooted tokens, I think they are, and uh, some panic tokens. And then we get um, our character cards for Rocket and Groot. And we also get two team tactic cards. So we get Deadly Duo which has got artwork by Scott Collin. Uh, it's unaffiliated, active, during Rocket Raccoon's activation, if he's with two of an allied Groot, both characters may spend two power each to play this card. Rocket Ma Raccoon may immediately perform up to three plasma attack rifle attacks. Each attack must be on a different target uh, enemy character. Right, so that's pretty good because um, for four points you're going to get three attacks uh, on different characters. Um, quite good and then um, we are group which is unaffiliated active group may spend three power to play this card Groot and allied characters win the four of him remove two damage good healing card and um, Groot is actually pretty good at that All right okay so rocket and Groot are not meant to you can play them on their own but they're not meant to actually be playing on their own they're um, actually meant to be um, a unit uh, hence their uh, the, the low threat level of them both together, right? So, um, I'll start with Rocket first. Rocket has got a uh, stamina of three because he's, you know, he's only tiny. He's got a move of medium. He's got a size of one. He's the smallest character in the game so far. And he's got a threat level of two. He's got an energy and a physical, uh, sorry, physical and energy, a defense of two, and a mystical defense of three. He has his plasma rifle, which has got a range of five, does five damage and costs no power. After this attack is resolved, uh, it, the character gains power equal to the damage dealt. So if you play that um, this card, which is the deadly duo, that one, for four points, he can make three range five, five strength five damage attacks uh, on different targets. That's going to lay down some serious firepower. Now. Because he's got a low stamina, you're going to try and keep him alive as long as possible. That's where Groot comes in. Um, he's got the uh, Hadron Enforcer, which has got a range of 5, does 7 damage, and has a 4 power cost. Uh, on a roll of a wild, it has Vortex. Before damage is dealt, other enemy characters within range 2 of this character suffer 1 damage, and are pushed towards the target character shot. So that was basically drawn in. And he's got booby traps, which is, costs three power points. When an enemy character spend, uh, ends a movement within th range three of this character, this character may use this superpower, roll four dice, the enemy character suffers one wound for each uh, critical and wild rolled. Um, personal bodyguard, this costs no power. When a, this character is a target of an attack and an allied Groot is within range 1 of this character, you may use this superpower. The allied Groot becomes the target of the attack, regardless of range or light of sight. And finally, his last power is small stature. This character always benefits from cover. And we flip him over, and he's exactly the same on the other side. He's only got 6 stamina in total. You know, most characters take 5 or 6 to knock them over. He's got 6 in total. But he's... Um, makes up for it in other ways, you know, like small is beautiful as they say. And then we have Groot. Okay, so Groot uh, is a bit of a powerhouse. Uh, he's got a stamina of seven. He's got a speed of shot, because he can't move very quickly. He's size three, so he's quite big. And he's got a threat of three. He's got a physical uh, defense of four, an energy of two, and a mystical of three. He's got a strike, which is range 2, 5 damage, no power. After this is resolved, uh, character gains power equal to that dealt. He's got Iron Groot, uh, which got a range of 2, does 8 damage and costs 6 power. Before damage is dealt, this character may throw the target medium. 
after this attack is resolved, the target gains the stagger special condition. He's a living plant, um, so for two power, you can remove three damage from him. And he's got tangling vines um, for two power, choose an enemy character within three, and this character gains the root special condition, uh, which is in the rule book. We flip him over, and he's exactly the same on the other side, nothing changes. Um, Everything's exactly the same on the other side. So basically, um, the best way to play Rocket and Groot is have them always together. Don't separate them because um, they are a team. They work together. They've got a good synergy going. Um, the miniatures are fantastic. And the guys from Atomic Mass Games are doing a brilliant job, um, especially seeing as that you know it's all a new company. I mean, the guys aren't new. They're all they're all industry veterans, but um, the actual miniatures are all pretty new. Just wish they'd actually listen to what um, the fans say about the small pieces. Uh, so next up will be um, most likely uh, Obsidian Call and Ebony Moor. Uh, they're the next release. And then there's Gamora and Nebula. And then as we get into April, we're looking at um, the Children of Thanos. Uh, so it'll be uh, a Black Dwarf and... Um, uh, Corvus Blade, Corvus Glaive, and uh, Thanos himself. Um, Thanos's price has finally been revealed at Gamma last week. Thanos is going to be sixty-four dollars ninety-nine cents. Uh, that's his manufacturer's retail price. So um, a lot cheaper than I expected him to be for a, such a huge kit because he's like five and a half inches tall almost. So well worth getting hold of. Uh, and that's it, I'm just rambling on now, so um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, check out my other videos for uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol, and uh, please support Gamers Web by um, visiting and subscribing to the, the channel and um, our Facebook page, and um, we'll hopefully see you again soon. Uh, until next time, have a great day, and thank you for tuning in. Bye.